Hey guys, this is Charles Jaeger with PremiumBeat.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a realistic VHS look entirely inside of Premiere Pro. Alright guys, as I mentioned, we're going to be creating this VHS look entirely inside of Premiere Pro. No round tripping over to After Effects or anything like that. I even have a method for us to add a subtle wiggle to our footage to kind of emulate the imperfections that are common on VHS videos. Before we get started though, I do want to mention that you should download the project file for this tutorial. That project file includes some VHS accents that I'm going to be using a little bit later on, and it includes some free VHS presets that you can install. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and get started creating this VHS look on some footage. All right, inside of Premiere Pro, I've got a clip here already on my timeline. That's gonna be the clip I'm gonna add the VHS look to. So the first effect we need is the Lumetri color effect. So under video effects, come down here under color correction, and we're gonna select Lumetri color. Just add that onto the clip. And you should see the effects controls here. Now we can see the Lumetri color effect. We can go through here and adjust these various parameters to create the VHS look. The first thing we need to adjust is under the basic correction tab here. Go ahead and toggle that down. And what we're gonna do first, we're gonna add a little more contrast onto this footage. VHS clips tend to have more contrast. I'm gonna set this somewhere around 55 or so. And we can see that it just helps to take away some of that flat appearance. Next, we need to adjust the white level. If I go ahead and select this and I'll move this up and down, you can see if we bring that down, a lot of times VHS, it's not gonna have that really bright white quality like this. Like when I see this, I think of like HDR or modern televisions. So we wanna bring this down to something like negative 50. You can see it just kind of adds a dull white over everything there. And we go ahead and close up the basic correction. And let's go ahead and toggle down the creative tab now under the Mitri color. And the next option I want to adjust is faded film. I'm going to set this to be about 30. You can see it's just going to lift the blacks. They're kind of subtle. Uh, you can push it to be more extreme if you want. You really can adjust these to any settings you want. I'm just going to kind of show you the settings I dial in to create my VHS look. So I'm going to set this faded film to 30. Next for sharpen. VHS is kind of a double-edged sword here. You think of VHS kind of being overly sharp, but compared to like HD footage, you know, it really isn't that sharp. But I'm gonna show you a way we can kind of dull it and then kind of add that extra bit of sharpening back onto the footage a little bit later. It'll give it more of a VHS aesthetic. So right now for the sharpen right here, I'm actually gonna set this to be negative 70. You see it's gonna kind of add a, a dull blur over everything there. And VHS tends to not have the best color either. So for vibrance, we're gonna set this to be negative 30. Now this next adjustment is really more of a preference of mine. What I like to do is take the shadow tint and move it just a little bit over into kind of the purple hues. You can see that it just adds a little bit of purple kind of reddish tint over the darker areas of the footage. You could adjust this on any of the other colors if you wanted to as well. Now let's go ahead and close up the creative tab and let's go ahead and toggle down the curves tab here for Lumetri Color. As I scroll this down, we have a few different options we can adjust. The first though is going to be on the main curve. So with the white one selected here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull this down on that top point just a little bit, something kind of like that level there. And then what I want to do is actually want to just go ahead and come out horizontally with it and kind of line it back up with the original curve. And what we're doing is we're kind of clipping that white level. So you can see it just kind of clips some of that detail out of the whites. And that's pretty common with VHS footage. It just typically doesn't have that much dynamic range. And this is a nice way we can kind of emulate that. Now, just to kind of mess up the footage a little bit more, I might come over here to the green channel. I'm just going to grab the top part of the green. I'm just going to shift it off axis just a little bit there at the top. And I'll do the same thing with the blue. And I'll just bring it actually down the other way, just so they're kind of off. You can see this kind of adds a yellow tint to everything. I'm gonna go ahead and close up the curves tab here, and we're gonna come down here to the vignette. And I typically like to add a negative one for the amount right here. And you'll see that just gonna darken around the edges there, but we're actually gonna kind of crop in on this footage. So these darker areas right at the very edge, we actually won't even see that. So just gonna add kind of a little bit of subtle vignetting around the actual four thirds that we end up with in the end. If you are gonna be showing your footage in full widescreen, you might not dial it down all the way to negative one, maybe like negative 0.5 or something like that. All right, let's go ahead and close up the vignette. Now we're ready to apply the next effect, and that's gonna be the channel blur effect. So we come back over here to effects. I'm gonna toggle down blur and sharpen. And we're gonna select the channel blur effect. And just add that underneath Lumetri color. And this is probably the most powerful effect for a VHS look in my opinion but it's gonna give us some of that color fringing that's really commonly associated with VHS footage. But we're gonna use the channel blur effect in kind of a unique way. We're gonna actually use two different versions of it and I'll show you why. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the red blurriness and I'm gonna set the red here somewhere around 20 or so. I'm gonna set it to 22. And you could do this with any of the colors that you prefer. 
However, I typically recommend just adjusting one or maybe two of the colors. You don't want to adjust all three because if you do that, it's just going to kind of act like a Gaussian blur because it's going to be blurring on all channels. So right now you can see on our footage, if I go ahead and make this full screen, you can see we're getting some red fringing around kind of the edges here. And that's what we want. However, we're getting a little bit of unwanted blurring around the edge of our video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and check on repeat edge pixels. Now the way we're going to differentiate this a little bit is we're going to come in here to blur dimensions. And we're just going to change this to be just vertical. So now if we look at this again in full screen, we're going to see we're only getting that red fringing kind of on the top half of everything. It's not kind of going all the way around like it was before. And that's very important because we're going to add another channel blur effect with a different color going in the other axis. So let's come back over to our effects and select channel blur again and just add another copy of this below the first channel blur we added. And just scroll that down. So now I'm going to come over to the blue blurriness and I'm going to make this be 30. And I'm also going to check on repeat edge pixels. And I'm going to change the blur dimensions for this one to be horizontal. And I might even add just a little bit of subtle red blurriness back onto this as well. I might say that's something like 14 just to give that a little bit of extra dimension. And let's go ahead and look at this in full screen again now. And you can see we get kind of this nice fringing here. We have that green and blue on the edges and red on top. And this kind of helps emulate an RGB split effect going on with our footage. Now we can go ahead and add in some of that sharpening I mentioned before. So let's come back over here and we're gonna scroll down to unsharp mask. Let's apply that underneath the second channel blur. And we're gonna bring this down. And what I wanna do for a mount, I'm gonna set this to be 100. But where we're really gonna get our effect from this is gonna be under radius. And I'm gonna set this on a fairly high amount, something like 12. And when I do that, you can see how that really fringes and kind of pops around all the edges of everything. And I can actually scroll and adjust this so you can kind of see what's happening to the footage. So you can see really you can push this to an extreme. Again, I'm gonna set this back to 12. And let's go ahead and make this full screen again and look at this. Because we initially blurred out our footage, we're not getting an over sharpening or more a result that would be not necessarily authentic for VHS. We are getting kind of that emulated really fringe look and just really kind of retro look on this footage. That's why I really like using unsharp mask to create that look. Finally, we want to add a little bit of subtle noise onto this footage. So let's come back over here to the effects and we're going to find noise. I'm going to toggle that down and we're just going to select the noise effect, place that underneath unsharp mask. And I'm going to set the amount of noise to be something fairly low, something like 8%. And I'm actually going to check off to use color noise. And you can see when I make this full screen, we just kind of get a little bit of almost like a film grainish effect on top of this, really just to add in a little bit extra distortion. Let's go ahead and do a quick preview of this. I'm going to set my out point right here. And I'm going to come here to sequence and just select render in to out. All right, so now we can see the results of the VHS look that we created entirely inside of Premiere Pro. Also, if you download the project file for this tutorial, I included some VHS assets that I created that you can use to accent your VHS look even more. And I've went ahead and imported those into Premiere Pro. Let's go ahead and open that up. And what I've got here is this VHS grain. I'm just gonna drag and drop this on top of my video. I'm just gonna trim this so it's only the length of my clip. And what this is, is just a little bit more kind of like emulated grain. You can see these with some color distortions. There's kind of magenta and green kind of color tones subtly on this. You can see it kind of flickers. And then there's also little black specks that'll appear every once in a while. Again, just kind of accenting that VHS look. And so what you can do with this, go ahead and place that above your footage. And for the blending mode under the effects controls, go ahead and set this to be overlay. And that'll just overlay that on top of your video. And if it's a little too intense, you can always adjust the opacity of it, bring that down to something like 80 or 50. Because on different clips, you will see that color fringing and color kind of variation a little bit more or less. And sometimes that can be a little too distracting. So just adjust the opacity with that. And you can kind of see what this looks like here on our clip now. Also, if you are going to use this VHS grain overlay, you might want to go back to your original clip and go ahead and just turn off the noise effect if that's too much noise for you, or you can leave it on. Really, it's your preference. Now, again, traditionally, VHS video is going to be in the 4x3 format. And we have a few different methods we can use to create that. First of all, with our sequence, go ahead and select your sequence, come here to sequence at the top and under sequence settings. You can change this to be a four by three aspect ratio. Right now I'm working with 1920 by 1080. So in order to make this four by three, I could just change this to be 1440. And when I go ahead and click over here, you'll see that'll change that to be an actual four by three. And we can come down here and click okay. And it's gonna adjust this and click okay. And you'll see it's actually gonna crop in on our footage to make that aspect ratio, the traditional VHS aspect ratio. Now for me personally, I like to actually just add an overlay on top of HD footage just because this is a really a stylized look and I don't really want to upload a full video 
in this aspect ratio. So I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo that change. And what I've included in the assets, you'll see I've got these two different four by three aspect ratio overlays for HD video. And one is just the typical one like we just saw, but the other one I've got is this vintage one. I'm gonna drag and drop that on top of my footage, you can see. And I'll just go ahead and make this the same length of the video clip. But what I like about the vintage one is it crops it to the four by three, but if we go ahead and make this full screen, you can see we kind of have these slight rounded corners and it's a little bit of a feathered edge too. So it just kind of adds that retro vibe onto our clip. So if you are gonna be adding the VHS effect to an HD video, maybe with like a music video or something like that, you can always just use overlays like this to again, give it more of that VHS aesthetic. Also included with the project file though, I've went ahead and created a VHS preset and a VHS wiggle effect. It'll add kind of a little bit of subtle VHS wiggle to your footage. Let me go ahead and show you how you can install those and use those really quickly. So come over here to the effects panel and under presets, I'm just gonna right click on presets and select import presets. Then just locate the project file folder and you'll see VHS presets inside of there. Go ahead and select that and click open. And now if we come back over to presets and I'll toggle this down, you're gonna see we have these VHS effects right here. And so we have the first one, which is VHS look. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete this clip of the B I've got there. I'm gonna drag in another clip I've got and just place this down here and you're gonna see what we can do with this. So here we have our standard clip. I'm just gonna select VHS look, drag and drop. And now we've immediately applied the same VHS settings onto this clip. But if we go ahead and preview this clip, you'll see the clip is actually just locked down. So now if we wanna add that kind of VHS wiggle to this, I've got another preset here called VHS Shake. So I'm gonna select that and apply that to my footage as well. And when we do that, you'll see two things have happened. One, the footage got scaled up by 1%. That's just to ensure we don't get any black edges when it is shaking around. But you'll see we have keyframes here on every frame of this clip. And so now if we go ahead and do a quick RAM preview of this and take a look, You'll now see we have that subtle wiggle shake added on top of our footage. And typically you'd have to actually round trip over to After Effects, add a wiggle expression on your footage, and then bring it back into Premiere Pro. But now with this preset, you can actually apply this to any clip up to one minute in length. And that'll go ahead and just immediately add that wiggle motion to your footage. Now most of the time, each of your clips are gonna be under one minute, but if you do have one that is over a minute and you wanna add the shake to it, you can still do that. Just select the razor tool and just go ahead and cut it somewhere before the one minute mark. And then just apply the VHS shake to each half of that video. It'll still look correct. And you'll be able to get that shake on a clip that's over one minute long. Finally, if you guys wanna add a few more VHS effects onto your footage, I'm gonna come back over here to video effects and under distort, there's two effects in here that you can use to also accent it. The first one's gonna be offset. If I go ahead and apply this to my clip, you can see we can use offset to kind of emulate that frame slipping that you commonly see on VHS footage. And so you can kind of just roll this and keyframe it and do whatever you need to do with that. And the next effect we can use is the turbulent display. So if I apply this on my clip, we can create a little bit of, kind of almost like static distortion on our footage. On the displacement, go ahead and change this to be only horizontal displacement. And for the size, you're gonna bring this down really low. And for the amount, we can go ahead and increase that here quite a bit. And you can also increase the complexity if we want to as well. You can see if I go ahead and make this full screen, you can see we're getting some of that kind of like VHS distortion, almost like tracking or fast forwarding type look on our footage. And then all you need to do is keyframe the offset and the evolution of this, and you can keyframe it on and off on your clips as you wish. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and picked up some ideas for creating the VHS look on your own footage. This is a really fun tutorial to experiment with and create. I always enjoy creating the VHS look. Remember, don't forget to download the project file that includes the VHS presets and other goodies. Also, make sure you check out the other tutorials and content on the Premium Beat blog. They post a ton of content on there every week. Again, this has been Charles Jaeger for Premium Beat. Thanks for watching.